Hey, what is up everyone? Tyler Ramsby here back with another video. And in this video, I wanna show you a second way to bypass Windows Defender. So you may have seen my video from last week where we used Hoax Shell, specifically Hoax Shell Listener, to bypass a fully patched version of Windows 11 and Windows Defender. But the problem is some of you may have pointed out on LinkedIn is that was a very simple reverse shell. Not that hacky, not that cool. We're gonna turn it up a notch and let's see if we can get a full interpreter shell on an updated version of Windows 11 and an updated version of Windows Defender using a really cool program called Scarecrow. Without any more further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. Now, just to make sure I'm not making this up, let's check Windows security. The machine that we're on right now is not a virtual machine. This is my real physical device, my daily driver that I use day in and day out that I keep updated. So you can see everything is on. It was last updated 6 18 10 45 p.m. and it is 6 18 11 33 p.m. So everything is fully updated on this Windows Defender machine. The way we're going to attack it is I wanted to make it as realistic as possible. So we're not doing this in like VMs and VPNs we are simulating what a real attacker would do. So I have spun up a C2 server in Azure so that we have a public IP so that we can host malicious payloads for anyone with internet access. So I could target any computer. So once again, we're not going through a VPN y'all. We're going across the internet like a real attacker would do to download the malicious file, execute it on our machine, and let's see if Defender can catch us. So I spun up this VM, we have SSH open, and what I have done is just SSH into it. So everything you see here, although it looks like PowerShell, it is not. I just use PowerShell to SSH into our Kali Linux machine in the Azure cloud. Now, Scarecrow has a few dependencies. What I have done, if you look at the description of this link, I put in my GitHub a bash script, run the bash script on your Kali VM, it will download Scarecrow and it will download all the dependencies. So in a couple of minutes, you are up and running just by running one script, you're welcome. So what the heck is Scarecrow? Well, Scarecrow is a payload creation framework for side loading into legitimate Windows processes. Once a DL loader is loaded into memory, it utilizes a technique to flush an EDR's hook out of the system, DLLs running in the process's memory. This works because we know the EDR's hooks are placed when a process is spawned. In other words, it's just crazy. I, don't, I really don't know how all of this works, but read through this if you want the technical details. For this video, I do not want to bore you by reading a long paragraph of stuff. Let's just do it, right? It may not work. And when it comes to ethical hacking, pen testing, a lot of it is trial and error. Now, to set the scenario, the way a real attacker would set this up is they would likely create a web server and in their web server, they would have a landing page that looks like an authentic Microsoft page. What they might do then is if they have compromised credentials in your organization, maybe someone's email, or they send an email that looks like it's coming from help desk and they say, hey everyone, we are updating the software in our organization. Go ahead and go here, download the installer, get it installed, and then you'll be fully updated and ready to go. So you would use some social engineering, maybe some phishing techniques to get this exe on a victim's computer it will appear to be signed by microsoft it will appear to be safe because defender is not going to pick up on it and boom you got them so will it work i don't know it's it's worked sometimes it hasn't worked other times and we are just going to give it a shot and work through this together so if you have your own vm i would encourage you to follow along you can spin up a cali vm and you can spin up like a windows machine or set up networking on virtualbox or vmware and you can follow along with me run the script in the description of the video get scarecrow installed and now the first thing we're going to do is generate our payload with msf venom you can see my previous one from all the testing i've been doing as i've been playing around with this in my own little lab here We'll do our L host, which is going to be the public IP of our malicious C2 server. L port is going to be 443 to make it look like regular traffic. And we'll call it AV bypass dot bin. While that does this thing, let's go ahead and get Metasploit launch. Do do. Do, do. There we go. All right. AV bypass dot bin is there. So now we're going to run that through Scarecrow. I is we're going to inject it into AV bypass dot bin. We want it to look like it's signed by Microsoft.com. So it looks a little more legit and we're going to add some encryption as well to make it a little more difficult to figure out what is going on. Let's go ahead and click enter. Okay. So we created this CMD.exe with a fake cert and it'll appear like it's signed by Microsoft. So let's go ahead and move CMD.exe, whoops, CMD.exe to home Tyler C2 server. There we go. And if we go over to our C2 server here, 
we can go ahead and start a regular Python web server, but this is different than like your try hack me or hack the box machine. We're serving this out to all the internet. So if I was doing this live, you'd be able to come download this and uh, get pwned by me. In Metasploit, let's get our listener ready. So we'll use exploit multi handler. We have to set our payload to match the payload of the malicious payload we just created with MSF Venom, which was Windows x64 meterpreter reverse TCP. There we go. Let's go options. We'll set our L host to match our malicious C2 server, which is this right here. So let's grab that down. We of course don't want HTTP though. We just want the IP and we'll set our L port on 443 because I have that port listening in our networking stuff on Azure. So we have our payload set, we have our L host set, we have our L port set. Let's go ahead and click run. So our listener is ready. We are good to go. We are serving this file out maliciously. Once again, a real attacker would probably set up like a landing page. We just have welcome to Tyler C2 server. So pretty obvious that it's it's malicious. We can look at my test.txt file. We're successfully storing or serving files. Let's see if we can do cmd.exe. Of course, an attacker probably wouldn't call it cmd.exe, but we just want to see if we can bypass Defender. This is not Defender catching it. This is just a browser saying, hey, we don't normally download this, but you might think, okay, well, let me let me see more. The name cmd.exe, and it's signed by Microsoft.com. So, I mean, right, it, it, it must be safe. Ooh, and Windows Defender caught us. So we are zero of one in our fight against Windows Defender. And what a real hacker would do is they would find one that works, one that bypasses Windows Defender, and then they would target you with that one. So let's make another one. We have Excel. We'll make a few of them. And let's see if any of these make it past Windows Defender. We have another, another CMD. All right. So let's go back to this server. And we will remove this CMD.exe so it's clean. And let's go over to Scarecrow and we'll move Excel.exe, PowerPoint, whoops, PowerPoint.exe. What else we got? Word.exe, CMD.exe. Is that all of them? The home Tyler C2 server. And then on our C2 server, all right, sudo python 3-m. Let's see if any of these can make it past Windows Defender, shall we? Ooh, it looks like Excel.exe maybe made it past Defender. Let's make sure our listener is running right now. And so if I was an attacker, I'd be like, all right, I'm gonna take note of that. And you can see it looks it looks legit. So even if we take this application, move it over here, you're like, oh, okay, this is Excel, right? So help desk told me I need to update Excel, uh, download this exe and I'll run it. It was signed by Microsoft, everything must be good. And so let's just double click it. Okay, maybe that's a little out of, out of the ordinary, but maybe help desk said that's gonna happen. And look at that. We have fully bypassed Windows Defender. We have a full Meterpreter shell and a fully patched version of Windows 11, fully patched version of Windows Defender. I have a Meterpreter shell on my host machine and it only took two iterations of it. Our first EXE did not work, Windows Defender caught it, but as a hacker, what I would have done if I was targeting someone is I would spin up a version that they're running of Windows Defender and I would try till I have one that bypasses Defender and then I would use that one to target the user knowing that that one is going to work. So Meterpreter is running. I have Meterpreter shell. From here, you can enumerate for information. Maybe if you're not already admin, you can look privilege escalation. You can set up persistence here, maybe make your own account on the host machine. If it's an active directory environment, you can begin to dig deeper into the environment to see what you can find. But friends, that is why you don't use Windows Defender in an enterprise environment. A real EDR endpoint detection response solution would likely detect this based on behavior, but we did bypass Windows 11 and Windows Defender using Scarecrow. Hopefully you guys found this video interesting, a little bit fun to watch and uh, have fun out there. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.